All right, let's all be right here. You guys didn't tell me that we were supposed to wear a hat. We're all supposed to wear hats. Okay? Yes, in the chicken coop, you have to wear a hat. Okay. All right, guys, we have some exciting news, but a little bit of a problem as well. <laughs> so, let's just show you. So our chicks hatched. Oh, there's a chicken in there too. <laughs> but there is a chicken. <laughs> but it's okay because they're co-parenting and they're really, really nice to each other. Are they working really? together? Yeah. They take turns. They Do we know what wow. the chicken? We didn't decide if remember you said we need to pick. I say Gertrude. <laughs> okay. We always rename the Can chickens. Can I call her Gertie? Gertie yeah, yeah, Gertie's a good name. Kiwi and Gertie. I like yeah. Birdie. Yeah, do it. Here's a wasp. Get it, Kevin. No, 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 You're not gonna kill it with a freaking hat. It'll just be mad and stab you with its tail thing. <laughs> oh, wait, okay, it went away, it went away. I don't know, guys. Crisis averted. <laughs> Back to filming. <laughs> So look how many chicks there are. Oh There's my probably gosh. like 10 or something really? like that. I have to get close so they can see. Maybe some more ah. still have. She's angry. She is angry. Mm. You gotta let me see how sure. many are in there. So what's kind of hard is that the other chickens, whenever we have a, a chicken or a turkey hatch eggs, the other chickens wanna come in and like, I don't know if they wanna hurt the chicks or steal the chicks, but they always seem to mess with them. So now we have two mamas for protection. I have to say I'm always amazed that you can actually ship an egg online yeah. here and then it's fertile and then it actually hatches. Yeah. Right? It's not weird. We never expect it. It just happens and then we're like, oh yeah, those eggs. That's so crazy to me. And it's so weird that Gertie stole some of the eggs, pushed them over <laughs> with her beak I know. and sat on some of them. I think they're done hatching, but they're just both in there. We put food back there. We brought water in here. So... <laughs> So my original plan was to get some nail polish and put it on the ones that were under Kiwi and the ones that oh. were under the black chick, but now they're all, they're all, they're all merged they're now. now. So yeah. I wanted to see like if one preferred one mama yeah. over yeah. the other. It's Brady, switch or if they can't it's tell. Brady Bunch. There's no anything now. They're just co-parenting. No separating. All right, so we got to remember names of all these ch <laughs> Oh God. <laughs> Wish you would let me see them. They're so cute. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. Oh, you're too big. You're too big for it. Oh no. Well guys, Ethan just recently graduated from high school and got a scholarship to a local university here. So, you're done. You're officially done I'm with done. high school. Now you can grow your beard out. I see that yeah, you're already. I'm starting to. I need to shave down here. Though. So, are you going to miss the farm going away to college and all that? Just milking all the goats. <laughs> yeah. So sad. So sad. Tell everybody what you're going to be studying goats. Um, not goats. <laughs> But I am I'm going for ecology and evolutionary biology. Nice. So animals. Yeah, still, still animals, still animals, ecosystems and all that. Yeah, cool stuff. Very cool. Well, sounds good. Um, so let's show everybody your fun graduation adventures. Yeah. All right, you guys. <laughs>
really weird to have a high school graduate. It feels even weirder to have a kid that's going away to college, but I'm excited for him and all of his adventures and fun, fun things he gets to do with his life. But um, he won't be too far away, so hopefully he can visit a bunch and we can visit him. He won't be leaving till September. It's crazy, Ethan is done with high school. We have so many peaches right now and so today we are going to freeze dry them. Actually, I already freeze freeze dried them. They're amazing. I love this. I'm like going to be obsessed this summer with it. So as you guys know, Harvest Right, the freeze dryer company sent us a free freeze dryer in exchange for giving an honest review. So throughout the summer, we're gonna freeze dry a bunch of different stuff from the garden and the farm and everything and see how it turns out. Our first try was mulberries, which I hear berries are sort of hard to freeze dry. So they did great, but they took too long. So we wanted to go with something that was a little bit easier. And peaches were perfect, like super, super easy to do. Basically, we washed them, cut them up, put them on the trays and hit the start button. It only took about overnight and the next morning, they're nice and crisp and crunchy and ready to eat. Now, although these are really addicting because the texture is really fun, the bigger purpose for this is to be able to preserve our food in a faster and just easier way. I'm gonna stick this in the pantry, hopefully not eat all of them. And this can last for a very long time. And the easiest thing is we just have to add some water to it to rehydrate if we wanna make a cobbler or use anything, like make, make a peach salsa or something. But yeah, they're super addicting. <laughs> Living in Arizona has always made it sort of hard for us to preserve food because our kitchens are really hot. Our whole house is really hot. We don't have a cellar or a basement. This hopefully is gonna be my easiest way to preserve food and it's also really fun. <laughs> So I'll put the link to the freeze dryer that we got in the description below. You can go check it out and see what you think. Okay, everybody smile like you're having fun. <laughs> okay guys, welcome to a rundown of the goat show we just went to. And we did amazing. Well, not we got first place. <laughs> and now we're seeing one. We didn't get any first place, but it was really fun and we want to show you what happened. I'll hide my gum. You can chew gum, that's fine. No, it's weird because then people are being like, okay, no, does that so look like a... <laughs> what? <laughs> it looks like I'm... Okay. <laughs> so the reason we didn't bring Tilly and the babies to the show is because they would just not take to the training. They would not walk with us on a leash and we just did not want to deal with that at the show. It like didn't sound very fun to be dragging them around the ring and we thought, okay, you know, it's going to stress them out anyway. So let's just ditch those guys and bring the ones that actually are doing a good job. So we brought Daphne and Olive, Tatum, Hazel, and Raven. And then we brought, oh yeah, Raven and Finnick. So we basically brought four milking does and two like teenagers. And it turned out pretty, pretty good, right? Yeah. So first up is Daphne and Olive. And in some rings, they got pretty good, but on most rings, they were in the lower end of things. <laughs> well, actually, so Daphne did get second place one time and she got fourth place another time, but Olive was down in like the middle to end. And I think it was just because of her utter attachments. Like she has so much milk, so much capacity, but not a lot of uh, like high and tight attachments, which is something we'll work on when we choose which breeding buck to breed her with. So we did sort of okay with those two. And they also walked really well, both of them. Well, actually, you know, dad showed Olive and he said that she was harder because she kept wanting she, to put her head down. Yeah, she and did that all the time. Yeah, so he struggled a little bit, but I thought she looked really good out there. So, and Daphne did pretty good, you know, considering last year she flopped around on her back. This year, she didn't do that. She did a lot better. So next up was Tatum and she did pretty good, but she was at the lower end of things just because she freshened way back in November, which was a while ago. So, so her udder wasn't at its full capacity. Yeah, it was it was tiny little baby udder. So I was joking with all the readers. We left her udder at home. Like 
we'll, we'll make sure to bring it next time. So in anticipation for next year, we're gonna definitely breed Tatum closer to show season. So probably February or March, or not breed her, but have her kid then. So then she'll have a decent udder, hopefully. Right, Lydia? Yeah. yeah. And then with Hazel, it was sort of the same story. So she was like middle to end of the classes just because of the same thing. She freshened all the way back October 1st, which the judge is supposed to take that into account. But then at the same time, the judge has to judge the animals on the day that they are there. And what, what do they look like on that day? You know, the judge can't say, well, you know, it might look good in the future. They really have to judge that day. So Hazel, under some judges, she got fourth. And then on, I think that was her highest placing. Oh no, she got third one time. And then on the low end, she would, she got like eighth. Uh, so it was, it was okay. Now, as for the teenagers, Raven and Finnick, how did they do, Lydia? Here we go, Raven, here we go. They got second all yeah. the times, but it was only out of three goats. <laughs> So. Or five. One time it was out of five goats. There I think in one of the rings it was out of five and Raven still got second. So she's pretty good. She walked really well. Amazingly well for being technically a little baby. And yeah, she didn't fight us at all and she stood really well. She let us set her up. But she's the one I spent the most time with because I was determined to get a baby to be able to walk. So I think she'll do really well. She's nice and wide. And so hopefully next year she'll go into the ring or go to the next show as a first freshener. So she'll have an udder. It'll be interesting to see how that udder looks and see how she does in the ring. How do you feel? <laughs> Good job. Good job. You did it. Second you place. did it. All right, Lydia, what do you think of showing? about showing. <laughs> but, but ribbon. Well, you got a ribbon and everything. <laughs> I got a Dollar Tree ribbon, guys. <laughs> so overall, how was our experience at the show? Well, it was pretty hot. It but... was hot. But it was good. It was fun to learn. It was fun to meet other breeders. And I'm excited because the kids actually showed goats. So that was that was good. Now you guys are professionals. No. <laughs> they don't really like it as much because they're in the spotlight, but I like it. I think it's kind of fun. So believe it or not, that's it for the show season in Arizona. There are a few others in California, but I don't know if we'll hit those. I think we're just gonna always plan on making it to a few shows in the spring and then just having a nice, relaxing, fun summer. <laughs> right, Lydia? Right. Not the baby doll! Put it down! <laughs> That's a fake bone, by the way. <laughs> My absolute favorite thing about the summer is that I have kids that can finally milk. It's amazing. You're such a good milker. Aren't you glad you're graduated from high school now you can milk? Now I can milk my goat. That's gonna be your career. You're gonna just be milking goats the rest of your life for us. Yeah. There you go. It's a good job. They're all in the middle of them. Oh. It's, it's, it's my little nappy nap time. They're so tired. There's more than three though. I know for sure there's like eight. Yeah. Because we counted them when they stood up. Yeah. Is it bedtime for your two mamas? <laughs> Lydia's favorite goat to milk, Olive. Is it? I can't even remember. She does have nice teeth, don't you, Olive? She has nice, squeezable teats and really good udder texture. She just needs a little bit better attachments, and that's it. And then she's the perfect goat. See how nice it flows out? Yeah. Her teat openings, ugh, I love them. Daphne wins the award for the loudest, most impatient goat. Always wants to be milked right away. You gotta wait. You gotta wait, your turn. Did you not already milk Daphne? Nope, you can let her in. Go Daphne, go! Go! 
She never comes in. So, I've never had this happen before, but this little batch of babies, Daphne's Dolings, Reba and Dolly, they just never became friendly, no matter what we did, no matter how much we touched them. So we decided just before the show to go ahead and bottle feed them. That way they would get more friendly. So that's what we're doing with Dolly and Reba now. Kevin has got the system So these down. two know to come in front and then watch. She knows, she comes in the back and I lift up one arm and she comes under the <laughs> That's so funny. So Prim was also dam raised, but uh, was also half bottle fed so that she could take a bottle when she was with us. She's a bit stubborn, but she does take it. So normally we wait and we don't separate the dam from her babies until close to, you know, 10 weeks old. But for these two, for some reason, they would not warm up to us and bottles are really the only way to do that. So that's what we had to do with these two. It's, it's the craziest thing, but it worked and Daphne was very glad to stop nursing them. So I guess it just worked out for the best. Did you get all your food? <sighs> Was that yummy? Huh? You're a sweetie. You're a sweetie. In all my years of raising baby goats, I've never had this really happen where they didn't warm up to us eventually. So I'm not really sure. I thought we spent a lot of time with them, but they just weren't getting friendly and getting used to humans. They would shrink and run away if we tried to pet them. So it worked out well because we were taking Daphne to the show already and we needed to let her fill up and all that. So it worked out well to train them to the bottle and now, now they're officially trained and they can drink from us and they can also drink from Daphne. So I think I'm gonna do a hybrid method in future years just to ensure that they're really friendly. One of the things I hate is sending a baby goat to a new home and not really knowing how friendly they're gonna be. And if they're trained to a bottle, then, you know, they will definitely be friendly with humans. So that's sort of the reason why a lot of people bottle feed, strictly bottle feed their babies. But hopefully we can do a hybrid version and for little oddball babies like these ones, <laughs> we can get them friendly, but also get to stay with their mamas. Also, Kevin loves feeding baby goats bottles. <laughs> it's just the highlight of his day. Oh my goodness, hi. Where's your sister? Huh? Little Blair is still the buddy for Faye over here. <laughs> and they have always been friendly with no bottles. Why, how is that? How did that happen? How come you guys are just the sweetest, huh? It's because your mama is so sweet. All right, guys, thanks for joining us in today's video. We're so proud of Ethan for graduating and getting ready to head off to college. I can't believe it. Oh. Um, we're gonna have a fun summer. I'm really excited that the summer's here. That means no school responsibilities and that means we can hang out as a family and enjoy sort of our last summer together. In the meantime, if you wanna go back and watch all of the other hatching that Kiwi has successfully completed, I have no idea what's gonna go on with Kiwi and Gertie here. <laughs> we're gonna just uh, keep watching and hopefully they get along and hopefully the babies, um, I guess, choose a mama and go off with that mama so that they have protection we'll see we'll be watching them closely in the meantime you can watch those videos here